In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those who set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Who shut within the doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands, when I set limits for it and fastened the bar of the door and said, Thus far shall you come but no farther. And here shall your proud waves be stilled. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all, therefore all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat just as he was. And other boats were with him. A violent squall came up and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this? whom even the wind and the sea obey. The Gospel of the Lord. I have never crossed the ocean, except in an airliner at 35,000 feet, and so I have no idea what it feels like to be on a ship far from land and over blue water thousands of feet deep. 
but from the testimony of those who have sailed the open seas, that experience stands as an apt metaphor for the human condition in so many ways, not least in the revelation of our powerlessness before the majesty of nature. The book of Genesis tells us that when God made man in his own image and likeness, he gave us dominion over this earth and every living thing on it and said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. But our capacity to subdue the earth is that of a steward, not a master. And so our dominion over nature is never absolute. We too are part of the created order and the providence of God places limits on us as much as on the boundaries of the natural world. Boundaries such as the laws of physics and mathematics and the operation of the elemental forces that shape the universe and make it orderly and intelligible rather than random and irrational. But the same restlessness that led our first parents to reject the limits of their nature and thereby fall from God's grace is a constant part of human life, especially when we are reminded of our finitude by disaster. The book of Job is a meditation on just such limits, and Job is sharply tested by his sudden loss of everything. Through terrible tragedy, Job was reduced from health and prosperity to privation and affliction. And in the search to find meaning in his suffering, Job put God in the dock to question him about the whys and wherefores of the cosmos. Our first lesson today is taken from chapter 38 of the book of Job, in which God, who has listened patiently to all of Job's complaints and questions about the design of creation, finally gives a reply. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Who shot within doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands, when I set limits for it and fastened the bar of its door and said, Thus far shall you come but no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stilled. In other words, the Lord answers the questions of Job with questions of his own, all of which come to this. Since I, the Lord, made the universe and everything in it, including you, who are you to question me? The Lord thus reminded Job that no mortal can know the mind of God unless the divine plan is revealed to him. And at the center of this gentle rebuke of his creature, Job, God places the sea as the sign of his majesty and power. The sea also filled the psalmist with wonder, as we sang today. They who sailed the sea in ships, trading on the deep waters, these saw the works of the Lord and his wonders in the abyss. His command raised up a storm wind which tossed its waves on high. They mounted up to heaven, they sank to the depths, their hearts melted in their plight. I imagine that the fishermen of Galilee knew Psalm 107 by heart and could sing it both to praise God and to find comfort when they were tossed in their boats by the waves of a sudden tempest. <clears throat> Even the strongest and bravest men are no match for the power of the sea and the ferocious might of a storm, and experienced sailors know when they are truly in peril. And that is precisely what happened one evening as Jesus and the Twelve were crossing the Sea of Galilee. St. Mark tells us that a violent squall came up and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Let's linger with these words a moment. Most of the twelve had lived by the Sea of Galilee all their lives, and four of them earned their living on the water, catching fish. They would have known intimately the risks of a sudden storm, 
and they may have seen friends and colleagues die in just these circumstances. The storm was sudden and violent and whipped the Sea of Galilee into roiling whitecap waves capable of sinking their boat and taking their lives. In the midst of this pounding deluge, their boat was already taking on water, but the Lord Jesus was still sound asleep. I love this detail. He is a man like us in all things but sin, and so at the end of a long day of hard work, he was worn out and fast asleep on their journey. But he could also remain calm in the storm because he is not just the son of Mary. He is God the Son, the designer and maker of all things. So the dangers of the storm did not alarm the Nazarene rabbi, and he was able to remain peacefully asleep through the gale, not just because he was tired, but because he is himself the peace beyond all understanding. Once roused from his rest, however, the Lord Jesus then revealed his divine glory by his absolute mastery over nature. Quiet, be still, and the wind ceased, and there was great calm. What Job learned from the living God, and what the psalmist celebrated in verse, was then confirmed for the twelve by the command of Christ over the waters. God alone has complete dominion over the created world, and the Lord Jesus is God made man. Listen again to Psalm 107. They cried to the Lord in their distress. From their straits he rescued them. He hushed the storm to a gentle breeze, and the billows of the sea were stilled. But at this point in Mark's gospel, still early in the public ministry of Christ, the twelve could not yet grasp the full implications of what they had just witnessed. The Lord Jesus asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith. Mark tells us that after seeing this sign, the twelve were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? So who is he? Jesus of Nazareth is the Son of the living God, the eternal and omnipotent Word of the Father, by whom and for whom all things were made. When we live in Christ Jesus by grace, through faith, hope, and love, then no tempest in our lives can finally harm us or separate us from him. And even when we die, we are alive in Christ and destined to share his divine glory by the grace of adoption unto everlasting life. And that is why St. Paul could write to the Corinthians in today's second lesson that whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Being a new creation in Christ means that we live no longer for ourselves, but for him who for our sake died and was raised. And the love of Christ then impels us to share this gospel with others. The gospel teaches us that whatever storms we must endure in our lives, Christ is in control, even if he seems to us to be sleeping. Despite the dangers and uncertainties of life, this universe is not an accident. The cosmos is not random, and our existence is not without meaning or purpose, even when we suffer. Friends, because the universe was designed and made by the divine Logos, there is a logical and eternal moral law woven into the fabric of existence. And by right reason and divine revelation, we can know that law. And more than that, by grace, through faith, hope, and love, we can shape our lives by that law and love of God and find true freedom by abiding in the word of God. Each one of us is brought into being for a reason as an individual person, and each of us is known and loved by God intimately and personally. There is a divine and eternal plan in and for the world which no storm of this world can overcome, and that plan has been finally and fully revealed to the whole human race by the life, death, and resurrection 
of the one alone who rules the seas and all creation, because he is the Word made flesh, the Lord, Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us with confidence present our petitions at the throne of grace. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. For all bishops, priests, and deacons, for all religious men and women, for our seminarians, and for all the baptized. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. For those who hold authority in our nation, our state, and our community. Christ, hear us. Christ graciously hear us. For the elderly and the sick, for the widowed and the lonely, for those without work or without friends, Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the dead, Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, accept the prayers of your people and in the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O Lord, and to you we give all honor and glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A warm welcome to all, especially our visitors. Our new fiscal year begins in July, and for an update on parish finances, please read my bulletin column today. A collection plate is available at each door of the church, and thank you for your generosity. 
Please note that during July, we will not have confessions or the holy hour on Wednesday afternoons. It is our joy today to celebrate the 50th wedding anniversary of our parishioners, Tom and Dorothy Whalen. Dorothy, Deacon Tom, will you come to the center aisle for a blessing? Tom and Dorothy, do you renew and confirm the vows which first united you in the sacrament of holy matrimony 50 years ago? Dear friends, let us pray for Tom and Dorothy as we celebrate with them this golden anniversary of their wedding. Blessed are you, Lord of all creation. You have made marriage a sacrament of the new and everlasting covenant and a sign on earth of the union between Christ the Lord and his bride, the church. And through the blessings of marriage and family life, you lead us into the mystery of your perfect love. With Tom and Dorothy, we praise and thank you for their 50 years together. Bless this couple on their anniversary and unite them ever more closely as husband and wife by uniting them ever more perfectly to your son. Lead them, we beseech you, with their children and their children's children, with their family and friends, through the joys and sorrows of this life, to the eternal glory of the wedding feast of the Lamb. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Finally, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. 
and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and love of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Jacques our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. 
There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, From every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Blessed are the call to the supper of the Lamb.
body and blood of Christ.
let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.